Yeah, that's that's right. We've got winter warmer. It's perfect for this time of year. It'll warm you right up. There's a bit of mise en place, so a bit of uh, work involved, but you can put it in the oven and then you can just forget about it and enjoy this beautiful bake. So inside the bake, we're flavoring it with um, some smoked bacon, which is just going to make crispy. We've got some honey in there to sweeten things up. Some sage, beautiful um, sage with potatoes and uh, cheese and creme fraiche. Creme fraiche in there as well. And we've got some onions in here as well, but we're going to caramelize the onions for extra flavor. So I'm going to get these chopping and slowly caramelizing and and I'll show you how to build it a little bit later. Uh, quite a nice bake, and it's a bit wet around the country again today. Sorry if you're trying to dry out from last week. I know the rain is back, isn't it? But this will be the perfect thing to make on a Thursday afternoon. Yeah, exactly. So you can, you know, you can stick this in the oven, bake it, take it out, and just eat it mm. as it is. Or you can, uh, you know, serve a steak with it, serve it on the side of a steak, which is even better. Right, and you've done some mise en place already. Yeah, yeah. So we've done. Um, so we're going to caramelise the onions. So you, you know, you need a bit of time for this. So right. just, you know, slice them, slice them nice and fine. Yeah. Take the roots off and the skin off. Obviously, slice them nice and fine. A little bit of oil, a little bit of butter, and just slowly cook them. Okay. You know, and then the heat will just bring out all the liquid, and you keep cooking that off, stirring it occasionally, and all that will go off and then you, you then it will start caramelizing you'll get this like deep nice color and you'll bring out the sweetness of the onion because usually when you caramelize stuff you put things like brown sugar in it have you got any sugar in there no no but we are going to put a little bit of honey in as well oh okay there you go so, honey so we're, so we're really going to uh, make it nice and sweet okay good oh this smells so good just onion and butter yum <laughs> i could just eat that but, but that's it you know oh you, now we're bringing out bacon yeah, yeah so now we've got some bacon Nice. So you're just going to griddle it on a pan. Yep. So a little bit of oil, just get it cooked, get it nice and crispy, and then we'll chop it up, and then we can just sprinkle that through the layers. You know, I okay, mean, it is cool. optional. You don't yep. need to. I know you love your bacon, so I did put the bacon in here. Everything tastes better with bacon, Mark. It just <laughs> does. And honey. OK. <laughs> exactly. So you're going to love this recipe. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, so we've got our onions here. Yep. Um, so I'm going to pop that honey in there. So a little bit of honey just to make it even sweeter. Okay. And then I've got some uh, sage as well, which we're just going to chop up, roughly chop. It says a really good uh, winter herb at the moment, sage. Mm, yum, that's good honey too. So it's nice, right. so you just stir that through. You can turn it off the heat now. You know, we've got all our flavour in there, we've got our caramelisation caramelization going. Mm. Okay, that's. And we're just going to chop this uh, sage and then we'll put the uh, sage through the onion as well. So, okay. so just the heat of the onion will just bring out the flavour of the sage as well. Great. So it's quite a, it's quite a tough herb, especially this time of year. You know these leaves are quite uh, quite thick and hearty. So give it a really good chop. Well, it's a good one to have though. You know if you've got one of those apartments where you can only you know have a couple of pots. Yeah, no sage is a great one. Get some sage gum, and it'll grow through winter as well. Like rosemary as well, with a little yeah. bit of uh, care, thyme grow through winter. You know, all, this, all the soft ones, you can grow them inside, you know, just put them inside, don't leave them out to the elements. Well, I'm not very good with plants, so once my plants die off and they don't look that good, <laughs> that's what I do. I plant some herbs in them and uh, they seem to work really well. So, here's a little tip for you. Yeah, there you go. And you can always use the herbs, that's the best thing. Yeah, that's right, the and right. then So I've got some potatoes now, so just peel potatoes, give them a peel, give them a wash, yep. uh, and then we're going to slice them really fine. So if you've got a mandolin at home, just do it on a mandolin, just be really careful of your fingers. If not, you can slice it with a nice sharp knife. Just uh, if you take the top and tail off so the potato doesn't rock around everywhere and then just carefully take any time, you can get some nice slices. Oh, you are good at that. And a sharp knife obviously helps. Yeah, a sharp knife and just take any time and years of practice. You know, it's funny how many people have knives in their kitchen and they use them for years and they never sharpen them. Holly uh, recently <laughs> just sharpened her knives up and she said, what a difference it made. Uh, so there's something else you can do. You've probably got one of those sharpeners in the drawer that you've never used before. Get it out, have a whirl. Sharpen up. That's it. And then cooking is a lot more enjoyable with a sharp knife. Yeah. OK, and I guess it's a matter of consistency with the slices, isn't it? So if you end up getting them a bit thicker than what you've got, just make them all thick. Well, yeah, or just make them all thin. Okay, yeah, yeah cool. but definitely, you've got the consistency um, and then it will cook evenly. I mean, it's going to be in the oven for about an hour or so, so, okay. so a couple of millimetres is not going to make much difference, but if you start cutting them like that and like that, you're going to have crunchy potatoes. So it is important. Here. So we'll check the bacon, no, we'll flip it when we get some colour on there. Yep. And then once it's nice and crispy, we'll take it out, we'll chop that up, and then we're ready to build. Mm -mm. We need to finish up what we are making here. So it looks like we've got everything ready to go. The bacon's cooked, it looks great. Mm, yeah. yeah, so nice Ooh. and crispy, so I'm just going to chop that up in a sec. Yes. We've got our, our potatoes sliced, so you've got to do this last minute, otherwise they're going to they're go brown, okay? okay so they're cool. going to oxidise. Or you can slice them, pre-slice them, but cover them in water. Right. We've got our onions and the honey mix and the sage mix. Yep. Right, so it's all ready to go. So we're going to do a layer 
layer, so I've just got a little bit of greaseproof paper. I just paper. noticed that, so you put a bit of greaseproof paper in the bottom. Yeah, it's just a, like some insurance policy, really, okay. just, so, just to make it or help it come out at the end. So we'll okay, just do cool. a, just a nice sort of rough layer down first. Yeah. And then, because it's just potato, I want to give it a light season. And then what we're going to do is put some of this onion on. Yeah. Okay, just a spoon, spread it out. So it's just nice thin layers and we're going to build it up. I guess you don't want that layer okay. of onion too thick. No, no, just a, just a little bit. Okay. And then a little bit of bacon sprinkled over. And then we've got some creme fraiche. So we're going to use this for our richness and uh, to help everything bind together. So oh my just a goodness. little bit of creme fraiche here. So, I mean, you could do with <laughs> cream, cream and a few egg yolks. Um, and then it'll be like a bit of like a, a dauphin was or a gratin. Okay. Uh, but it's quite nice doing it with the creme fraiche because it's quite, you know, it's acidulated, it's sort of cultured cream, so it's got a little bit more flavour. It's well, nice you're, and you're thick. You're using some pretty big words this morning. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then basically that's what you do, and then just repeat the process. Keep okay, repeating cool. it, keep building it up, and we get all that flavour in between all those layers. So don't forget to season lightly okay. as you go, or every sort of second layer you can actually season because, okay, you know, cool. we've got all this flavour going in. We don't want to over, over salt it. Interestingly enough, you don't cook the potatoes beforehand. No, 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 we're going to cook them all in the oven. OK. I guess yours is so thin too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not going to take that long, but, I, well, it will take about an hour or so, so in the oven. So I've actually I've got one which I did a bit earlier, so that is here. OK. So this has just come out of the oven. So, so once we get to the top as well, we're going to uh, cover it with foil. So we're going to bake it with foil at about sort of 20, 25 minutes. Take the foil off and then bake it for another 20, 25 minutes, and then you sort of, you're left with this. So you can see... You know, mm. all the juice is sort of starting to thicken. You know, the potatoes are going down and sort of compacting. The potatoes are not far off now. And then all we're going to do now is get some cheese and we're just going to grate that over the top and then we're going to pop it back in the oven for about another 10, 15 minutes. Jeez. You know, let all that cheese melt, <laughs> grate it, go crispy. Oh, we like that. The potatoes will be nice and, um, nice and soft. You know, and then you can just let it cool down for about five, ten minutes, and then you can just whip around the sides, and if you're lucky, you can just flip it straight out or just serve it straight in your uh, container on the middle of the table. It's all up to you. Or if you want to be really fancy, yeah. you can let it cool down, you can pop another container or something on top, press it in the fridge overnight, which will compact all the layers, and then you can flip it out and cut it into nice little portions and then pan fry them. That's if you're oh, in a restaurant. Yeah. And you've got 24 hours. Okay. But you don't need to do that. And uh, is this right? Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Bit of bacon and start again. Okay, cool. So that's so about. So you just put a little layer of the cream fresh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you build it up. So I can just dollop it in. I don't know. Yeah, I have yeah. to spread it out. No, you, you spread it out okay, a little cool. bit. Yeah, it's all about sort of even layers and uh, and then keep going until all your ingredients are finished. End on a potato layer. Yes. Uh, a little bit of seasoning on that, and then uh, cover it with foil into the oven. Yeah. Um, and there you go. OK, great. Well, I'll carry on building this. It's going to be fantastic. Nibble on some bacon while I'm making it, which I'm sure I'm going to do. Look at oh, that. I turned it out. So it's better to let it cool down a little bit before you turn it out, but I have managed to turn it out. Yeah, oh, there it is. Look at nice. that. That is fantastic.